the worst form of toxic behavior. To be opposed by so many opinions that you can't even do what God has called for you to do. Not because it's hard on you, but because you don't have the right support system aside you to help push you. This is who God prepares the table in front of you for. It's not them that you don't like. It's them that you thought liked you until God exposed the enemy that was your friends to you. We're talking about being in the valley today. Where you're not sure if the rod is hitting you or if it's his staff that's against you. But you're walking through it today. See, I know there's another side to that as well, though. I know there's a side that is the protection. Mm -hmm. It says that his rod and his staff. But the Bible says that if you spare the rod, mm -hmm. you'll spoil the child. But David makes note to let us know that he is supported and guided by God's rod and his staff. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to play. But I will tell you on today that your purpose is more powerful than what you ever could come to play here or be played here. You know that? I want to be encouraging, but my spirit is warped between like three and four different stories, three and four different chapters. So I need a little guiding us. I often ask myself, like, what do the people need? Because all of this would be pointless. I know you're tired, but it would be pointless and effortless. I'd just be wasting your life mm -hmm. if I didn't speak to the people that need it. Mm -hmm. And you can come with a good word. But if you're not speaking to their needs, then they come empty, thinking they've been restored, but leaving unfilled. Mm -hmm. What do the people need? somebody else, which I know there's somebody else's situation, but worse. Mm -hmm. Usually about like choices. Usually about like force. What story do you speak of? Mm -hmm. David. David's good. But David's not good. The story is that David's a terrible person. David takes Uriah's wife, sleeps with her, gets her pregnant and then puts him on the altar of the front lines to be sacrificed so that his sins don't find him out. The Bible says Nathan, the prophet of God, came unto David and said, there were two men, mm -hmm. one rich and one poor. The rich man was having guests one day and invited a friend mm -hmm. to come over and to sit with him. Mm -hmm. So the friend came and that he would send his servant to go kill a fat cat. He said that the man didn't want to take from his many resources mm -hmm. and took from the poor man's one resource. Mm -hmm. So he was so close to the calf that he raised it from a baby, mm -hmm. fed it, mm -hmm. slept with it. Mm -hmm. It was like family to him. It was almost his daughter. Mm -hmm. Says the man took it, mm -hmm. killed it, and served it. David was furious, mm -hmm. upset was really mad about this said this is something that should not be done not in my kingdom I won't have it won't be able to stand for it but I gotta tell you on the day Nathan steps in and tells him wait a second before you send the order let me tell you who this man is this man is you you are the man 
And today I gotta tell you, I know many people look at you because of the situation that you were born into. And they wanna say that just because you were born in this part of town, or you were born to that line of name, that everything that you dream about is only a fantasy because you won't be able to see it because your parents didn't grow you to. You gotta know that just because you didn't grow up in it don't mean you'll never grow to see it. Uriah is somebody who is purposed, and I know this because he's connected to a powerful wife who will birth son of the king. Mm -hmm. I know that it didn't come through your womb, mm -hmm. but because it's in your house, know that it's purposed. Mm -hmm. You, you got to understand that the grave calling over your life is bigger than you. That's why the adversary has been after you. Mm -hmm. See, he, he's been hunting you, but many times it'll come in forms of your family before it ever attacks you. See, the enemy is only trying to get you weak in your marriage, weak in your mind, weak in the school. That's why you've been having so many difficulties at work and so many challenges on the job. That's why you've been doubted and disputed in school and can't have no friends at home. The reason why the family hasn't been able to maintain or keep their sanity in it and stop driving you crazy to it is because the enemy has been tactical about how he wants to oppose them so he can get to you. I know that he's on them, but you have to re rebuke the enemy and tell him everything that's in my house is under my bloodline anointing of favor that you may can come and attack them, but we gonna clap back. Clap back and everything that is will live and shall not die. Clap back and everything that is God ordained us to be the head and not the tail. Clap back and everything that is every time that I'm anxious, I won't be. I'll pray and petition for God to come in the room and sit and suck with me. You have to know that Uriah is under attack, but it comes in form of his wife. Mm -hmm. Anytime that the enemy wants you, he begins to impregnate you with ideas of conception that God didn't give you to birth. Mm -hmm. What am I talking about on today? When God has called you to do something greater than you, but the enemy puts in your mind that a simple job will do for you. No, it's not that you think that you're better. It's not that you think that you're above. It's not that he even grew to this type of status, but God has an anointing over you so big that normal mundane just won't do for you. You, you got to be able to know that God intentionally performed in you the test that you're big enough to do everything that you can conceive and birth, and I know you have to bear it. Bear it. I know many times it displaces you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll feel like an out of body experience what you're called to do, mm -hmm. what you're called to carry. Bathsheba's her name. It's not only does she have to deal with the death of her husband, who not only died honorable but at the hands of a lover who was king in power. See, I, I know that a lot of your season has been manipulated through purpose because what's in you is greater than what you see in front of you. You, you got to know that every time God ordains you, he impregnates you. That God never uses anybody that he does not impart from the beginning, a word for them to succeed and then become a successor too. Successor is somebody who leaves behind something for the next one to get up and carry on. You, you got to know you're birthing something mm -hmm. that is strong enough to pick up everything that your purpose drives you to, but your life would allow you to put down here. Mm -hmm. Know that when you die, the dream won't die with you. Yeah. Prove it, preacher. Uriah's dead but the baby's still in incubation, still inside the womb. Mm -hmm. You gotta know that when God purpose you, many times he'll disrupt the baby that's around you. I know they can't see it, but you gotta know that there's something stirring up on the inside. Mm -hmm. And even though people can't see it around me, there's a sound echoing inside of me that won't leave me alone. You, you, you gotta know that the purpose that's on you will scream out for you to help it, to birth it, to push it. And you can't come here and give up because of the pain of it, but God missions you not only to conceive it and bear it, but you have to birth it. I know that she is pregnant with purpose, mm -hmm. but her purpose comes from an ill-intended place. Mm -hmm. Even though there's death on her husband at the hands of the one that she loves, mm -hmm. 
she has to birth something that's not wanted, but it will prepare the way for everything that is the anointing. I, I know you, you didn't think that they had as much of a gift in their body as they did. But, but when you start building it and manifesting it, you'll start to see that everything that God promised me is starting to come to be. That God didn't give it to you for you to die in it. God, God didn't purpose you to come here and live, get through all of that to come here just to give up. I, I need you on tonight to know that David had to confess that he's done wrong. I know the way people treated you may have not been right. I know the the trials that you faced was at the hand of a lot of the times friends turned enemies. This family turned deceitful. But most of the time it's really just you opposing you that stops you by the doubt of everything that they say. But I want to tell you that God told Jeremiah, I don't want you to say it. I just want you to do it. I need you to just keep showing up to everything that is scary to you, show up in front of it. If everything that displaces you and puts you in a way off, show up to it. If you have to show up crying, I just want you to show up. You gotta know that when Bathsheba goes into delivery, it's difficult. I'm not really sure who I would be talking to, but I've only come on tonight to assure for you that God has greater assignment on you than where you would ever give up on you. I need you to hold fast to everything that is your purpose pushing you and know that God only put it inside of you when he develops for you the body that you're able to conceive, bear, and birth in. I know that when Bathsheba goes into labor, she has been impregnated through manipulation. She has become a ringleader on the side of accomplice, but she's the murder still of her husband. Impregnant with the next generation's hope to a greater passage. I, I, I want you to know today that, that the enemy messed up in one way. He, he messed up in determination of affirmation to kill you. That, that's why he's been screaming around you because he thought that maybe he would get you off course and off track. But for somebody on tonight, you needed to know that everything that God missioned for you to do that God already prepared a way for you to do it and then thrive at it. But if you're able to birth it and conceive it, then you were able to bear it, then you won't be able to be deceived by it. Everything that's inside of her is pushing purpose for the next generation. The next generation that is going to be better than this. The next generation that is going to be smarter than this. The next generation that is going to be more fulfilled than what I would give up. They're going to be more resilient than where I would get up. They're going to be more resistant than where we would lay down. And they're going to be more tolerant to where we would give out. But you have to know that she's pregnant with everything that is the next in line. It's in her stomach. It's, it's, it's in her body. And she has to bear it under false pretense. She has to conceive it under the manipulation of murder to it. But she has to birth it because it's calling from the future to give birth to it right now. I don't know what it is that's on you tonight. I'm not sure where you are. No, I, do. I know for sure or certain really what you face and what you've been through. I'm not sure I can even speak to you. I promise you that everything is going to be better. I don't know if saying to you everything will get better. It won't be like this always that sooner or later it's going to turn around will even do anything for you because you're so used to hearing just the mundane everyday usage of the words that they're not that meaningful to you. And you have to know Bathsheba said, David, I've heard enough that I've seen what you do by your hands, but the pretext of the man that I see or saw or fell in love with has changed. You have to know that God ordained for you not to come here and give up on everything that is your greater assignment to do more in the future, but so that you can identify through relevant reason that God only put it in me because I was able to handle it. I'm able to pull it. I can bear it. Not only that, but you can birth it. You can birth it.